said we were heading to the warm land last episode and here we are. I just love the beautiful Cowichan Valley. And because it's such a huge place, we're gonna focus specifically on Duncan for the next 30 minutes. We wanted to introduce some amazing new hosts that we have on board on our team for where you live. They include Amy and Tafadzwa Matamba, who pretty much know everybody in Duncan. They're leading the charge for our art and culture segments. And the wonderful Ruth Mochi. She sits down with the Couch and Intercultural Society to see how they help new Canadians adapt to our culture. But first, we are getting started with a bang. We're meeting a guy from Duncan, BC, who's an ex-army reservist, as a matter of fact, and he started a really successful business. So we're gonna meet up with him and see all the cool products that he is literally shipping across the world. My name's Samuel, I own Lockhart Tactical. I was actually born in Switzerland, but I've been in Canada since I've been about two years old. I lived in Duncan for most of my life. I think it's one of the nicest places on earth here that I've ever visited. Lockhart Tactical is a military law enforcement and outdoor equipment supplier. We handle everything from boots to backpacks, flashlights, bullets, guns, body armor, spike strips, you name it. Uh, we supply the, the military and uh, law enforcement agencies all around the globe with different equipment that they need to do the job that they do. This here that I'm holding in my hands is the UBS-12, which stands for Under Barrel Shotgun 12 Gauge. This has been developed by myself uh, and our machine shop entirely here in Canada. All of our machining is done in Parksville, British Columbia. This is a one-of-a-kind Under Barrel Shotgun unlike anything else in the world. So you're going to be pretty excited to see about this. Okay, we're just going to test out the UBS-12 here. Alright, so we're just gonna go over to our next neighbors here and see if they want to try out the UBS pump. Hey guys, uh, looking to go shooting here. Would you want to try out our UBS pump? Yeah, we do. Okay, one of the most uh, interesting features, I think, is at the back here, there's a little button up top that you push to release it. The recoil pad will slide to either the left or right side. And we have four storage tubes internally. In each different tube, you can store different types of ammunition. Uh, if it was the police, they could have uh, left lethal rounds, they could have breaching rounds, uh, they could have birdshot rounds or whatnot. The tubes allow you to easily separate the ammunition, or you could put small survival items in there for campers and outdoor enthusiasts. Simply close it up, the recoil pad will lock into place, and you're ready to start firing again. I'm very excited that from the small city of Duncan, I'm able to be shipping products worldwide and kind of putting this, us on the map. Uh, I'm very proud of the business that I created here, and I love the job that I do. I'm most honored to see all the positive reviews that we have on Google. Uh, countless customers just having a wonderful experience from us, and for me as a business owner, that's, that's the best feeling that I can get. Here we are backstage at the Cowichan Performing Arts Center and it's a big night tonight. It's the Cowichan Music Festival Gala, so it's a highlight concert. And here we are backstage with Kathy White and Alyssa White and they are the Highland Dancers and we are so excited. Kathy, like, what brought you into dancing and particularly Scottish dancing? Well, I'm very proud of my Scottish heritage. My grandfather was uh, born and raised in Glasgow, Scotland. And he and his brothers moved to Vancouver um, in their late teens and they started Fletcher's Meats, which Ooh. is now the Fletcher's Bacon that you buy in the stores, of course. And, I, and my mom was the pipe major of Victoria Ladies Pipe Band wow. for years. And she said if she ever had a girl, yeah. that she would put her in Highland Dancing and the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. 
Yeah. Anissa, see, this is amazing that you are with your mom right here. Like, yeah. <laughs> the traditions. What, how is it important to you to be keeping the traditions of dancing? Well, it, it kind of got forced upon me. But <laughs> I, I love that about it. Um, it's literally been my entire life. And um, I mean, it, it's taken me around the world, really. Wow. Um, Scotland, uh, Florida, California, Edmonton, um, Ontario, and now we might be going to Africa. Yes. <laughs> don't say, don't say. And maybe, Kathy, you could maybe tell a little bit about that, but the reason that we're actually all here tonight is for a really special occasion. So what did we create here? Well, I think it was actually Alyssa and you two that got this started <laughs> at the Duncan showroom through their music. Yeah. And Alyssa came to me and said, these two would be really fun to do a dance with. So the next thing that happened was they gave me one of their CDs and I'm listening through and I hear the Auld Lang Syne or a or similar song to, <laughs> to Auld Lang Syne and I'm thinking, hey, that's one of Robert Burns' famous songs and I've done many choreographies to that. So I just thought a collaboration between Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe and Scotland, Scotland and Canada, and Canada. Yes. that would be a really fun thing to do. I think it's really important to do what you're passionate about because with all the negativity that's going on yes. in the world around us right now, it's good to stick to what you love. <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful and you know, we really believe that arts and culture is that bridge to bringing community and people together. Yeah. And we're going to sign out here from yeah. the theater and we'll yeah. see you later. <laughs> wow. Cheers! Cheers. Woo! High five! Yeah! yeah. Alright, one love! <laughs> You're watching the Duncan edition of Where You Live and we're right here in Cowichan Intercultural Society and today we'll be talking to Lynn Weaver, she's the Executive Director of the Cowichan Intercultural Society. Thanks for being here Ruth. What does the Cowichan Intercultural Society do? Um, what kind of services do you provide? So we provide settlement services for newcomers to Canada that are settling in the Cowichan Valley region. So that looks like things like English classes, tutoring, um, youth programs and homework clubs, lots of different supports and services. So what that looks like if someone's new to the country, new to the region, they come in and meet with a settlement worker and they go through a needs assessment and then based on those needs, um, next steps follow from there. That sounds really interesting. I'm sure it's really great working with people from such a diverse um, cultural background. Um, what, what, how has that influenced your view of the world? How has that changed your perspective? That speaks to what for me is one of the best parts of the job. Mm -hmm. Connecting across cultures really helps um, deepen understanding and means that there's always something new to learn. Mm -hmm. And I think the two biggest keys for navigating difference are non-judgment, that's a huge one, and cultural self-awareness. Mm -hmm. So much of what we think of as human nature is actually cultural conditioning. It's the unspoken, unwritten rules that we learned as we grew up. And not that those rules from any culture are good or bad, but just that it's beneath our awareness. What would you say the most challenging part of your job is? It sounds like it's a whole lot. Mm. I, I would say one of the hardest parts of the job has come about fairly recently. We became a sponsorship agreement holder, which means refugees can be sponsored directly through our organization, which is great mm -hmm. and brings us full circle from our origins as a society supporting Vietnamese refugees in the community in the early 80s. So it's full circle from the society's inception. Uh, but what has unfolded. It's a published list and, and people from all around the world contact us wanting to be sponsored or to have family members sponsored and hearing their stories, knowing that there's little we can do is, is really heartbreaking. And we already have a long wait list of people wanting to be sponsored and sponsors are hard to come by. It's a big commitment. It's a, a year of financial and emotional support. Mm -hmm. And so sponsors don't enter into that commitment lightly. So we're always trying to find more people willing to take on sponsorship roles. Is there a personal story of success you'd like to share? What, what does success look like for some of the clients? The, the most poignant at the moment, I suppose, is that so many of the Syrian families that arrived within the last year are doing well mm -hmm. and children are settled in schools and a lot of um, th that cohort are, are finding employment now as well, which is such a huge 
piece of the puzzle. Everything else falls from that and having champion employers makes such a difference. People that are willing to meet people where they're at. A lot of the Syrians arrived with very little English and you know, I think of putting myself in their shoes if I was showing up in Syria without any Arabic, you know, and trying to, you know, find my way and find work and so on. So I think just seeing how well um, they've adjusted and how willing they are to put themselves out there is really such an inspiration. Thank you so much for speaking to us today. It's been such a great pleasure. Um, thank Thanks you. I hi away we we hey so lonesome will I be without you here with me please please come see me come see me in my dreams we hey Wow. I'd like to welcome Joe Thorne, otherwise known as Bingo, here in the heart of Duncan, in the Cowichan Territory. And Joe is here to share just a piece of the importance of the dance, the tradition, the arts, the culture. Joe, tell us, what, what would you like to share with us today? First of all, Haitab Garcia Musea, and welcome to the territory of the Coast Salish Cowichan people. As you can tell by my out regalia, I'm a powwow dancer. I represent those that are long since gone, and I carry forward the teachings given to me through powwow so other kids can say, I want to do that too. <laughs> this is a fan. It's not just for cooling down on hot days, but it was made for me by a 15-year-old girl in Wisconsin who was blind, and she mm. told me that her eyes were in her fingers. Oh, wow. She gave me the, she picked out the colors because she said, the white suited me because she said you gave her hope. She picked the yellow because she said I gave her peace. She picked the little dark feathers because she said you reach out and the children follow you. So I'm very honored to, to use this. I represent a lot of the veteran colors. I'm really proud of that. I'm a Vietnam veteran, United States Marine Corps. Served my country well. So I, I wear a lot of that. Wow. wow. And I represent all of the fallen warriors. We are still at the Cowichan Intercultural Society, and now we're joined by Michelle Redfern. So, um, what do you do as a settlement coordinator? I help as part of a team to assist newcomer Canadians and longer term immigrants in accessing services and um, getting information on all aspects of uh, what they need to settle and integrate in Canada. So what would you say, working with all of these people, what would you say your, their biggest um, challenge is? Oh, that's a hard question. Yeah, because just like each interaction with a client is different, there are completely different needs to every client. So. Um, a client that I am helping from Switzerland who comes as a skilled immigrant with a master's in computer programming is going to be is going to require very different assistance than a refugee who comes and is illiterate in their own language and has been traumatized by war and is preoccupied by what is happening with their family back home. I'm going to come alongside those um, different clients very differently. So um, doing all of this, I'm sure there are times when you get feedback from your clients about what you're doing. Um, what kind of feedback do you get from them? I welcome feedback. I always, I feel like as a team, we always want to improve our services. However, I'm not sure that people always feel able to give us uh, to give us critical feedback. Uh, I do know <laughs> every day that we're really tested by space and uh, we try to maintain confidentiality for people but we're crammed three or four staff people to an office so we often have to take our laptops and go wandering around uh, trying to find a nook in the hallway or trying to find an empty office to try and meet with people so that's definitely an impediment to our work and people are feeling it for sure uh, so we are going to be doing some capital fundraising to try and raise money for a, a space, a dedicated space that we can stay in over the long term. Okay, um, I'm sure it's going to work out. Um, you're doing such 
a great job here. Thank you so much for sharing this, your beautiful stories. With oh, us. thank you. Thank yeah. you for listening and for bringing this <laughs> cause time. to uh, so people can hear about it because right. uh, the journey of an immigrant is not always an easy one. And with the tenacity and determination and hard work that the people that I work with show, I'm so uh, excited about a future where these people are going to be Canadians. Ladies and gentlemen, we have left downtown Duncan and like we are now here and Couch and Valley International Folk Dance, that's the venue we are and you can see it's happening right here. Yes, that's right. And we are standing here today with Kate Roberts. So Kate is a long-standing community member. She's been a teacher and she's been really big in the community and introduced us to the folk dancing here, the international folk dancing. And so Kate, tell us what is it that you love about folk dancing and why you come? Well, our focus in this club is to have fun and just to enjoy ourselves. And I love the music. And you see this beautiful dance behind us? Oh. This is Hora Becky from Romania. And I just love the music. And this is from Romania too. Wow. So, so you can get all jazzed up and dressed up yeah, and have some fun. You can. So the music is what brings people and the camaraderie and the fun. We're not into perfection or performance. Thank goodness, because I know I already made a few mistakes tonight, so that's good to hear. Oh, that's great, Kate. And like, what I love about folk dancing is that it's like taking a trip around the world. You come, and how many dances would you say that you go through in an evening? Oh, in an evening, we might go through 20 or so. We have over, well over 300 in our club from all around the world. Wow. A lot of our dances are from Europe, the Balkan countries, and uh, the Middle East, but we do dances from Japan and Hawaii and French Canadian dances as wow. well. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so we really welcome beginners and newcomers and everybody. We need to even have children. And some of our dances, dancers danced into their 90s. Wow, I, that's what I love about it, seeing all ages come together. Mm -hmm. So how can we find out or how can we join and when does it take place? Well, we have brochures around the community okay. and it's every Monday night at, from 7.30 to 9.30. You can drop in, come late. The first night is free. So it great. Oh, wow. yeah. And so even nice. after that, it's very reasonable, I know. And you can talk to Kate when you come. It's, it's mm -hmm. just a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. So we would love to encourage you to come out and join and join the fun. Tafazwa and I love to come and join the folk dancing. And we've been missing them so much that you'll be seeing us back here because we're definitely coming back for a bit. Oh, good. On Monday, yeah. on Monday, we'll be on Monday. dancing. Oh, well, I'm yes. going to hold you both together. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for staying with us. Um, we're still at the Coach and Intercultural Society. And now we're speaking with Mohammed. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us and just doing this. You're welcome. So just a little bit about your background. How did you come to Canada? Uh, I came uh, from Jordan. Before Jordan, uh, I changed my place to from Dara. Uh, it's uh, south side of Syria. Okay. Uh, with the, when uh, the wars is start, mm -hmm. I uh, went to Jordan. From Jordan, I came to here to Canada. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The first time we down in uh, Montreal, mm -hmm. we still like uh, one week. Mm -hmm. After that, we uh, travel to Langford and, and finally in Duncan. Duncan. Yeah. And how long ago was that? Uh, it's like. Uh, one year and two months. Okay. Yeah. And um, I know you work with the at the woodwork place right now. Yeah. How did you come about that job? Yeah, CIS office helped me about that. Okay. And they are search, and uh, Michelle uh, find this work, mm -hmm. and we go together to interview with the employer, okay. and he accept about me to works with him, mm -hmm. and uh, this is uh, like uh, woodworks for make. Uh, the chairs, bunches, mm -hmm. natural wood. Mm -hmm. uh, it's awesome places okay. for uh, all the woods works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Well, the Intercultural Society approached us a number of years ago and, and brought a few different people by just as informational interviews, but really I think they wanted more than that. Um, there were a couple of people that uh, showed some promise from our point of view, and I thought, well, let's give this a go. And uh, I've been really pleased to uh, be able to bring in people that uh, are in a little bit of need, but they're also giving to us at the same time because, you know, Mohammed, for instance, he, he was a BMW mechanic in Syria. So, you know, here he is working in my woodwork shop and he's got a new start for his family. I feel good. He feels good. We have a number of people here that are from all over the world and, uh, and we all get along and it's amazing. We've, you know, we've got people from Argentina and Colombia and Syria and Turkey and Poland and Germany and New Zealand and, and it's a wonderful differentiated mix. Canadian people are so kind and uh, so nice with us and uh, like Syrian people. Mm -hmm. I respect him, them uh, culture and they respect me and my culture and my religion. So as a newcomer myself, I'm pretty new to the Canadian society, but um, there's just this good feel about being around Canadians. I don't know if it, it's the same for you. Does Canada feel like home? Um, I met your family just a while ago and um, yeah, for them, how does it feel? Yeah, they are feel very good. They are enjoyed. Uh, go to play soccer ball every Saturday and uh, they are went to school. Uh, my uh, little ones, my kids, Amira they are, and Omar, they are under five years. Okay. They are came here to here to CIS office mm -hmm. and they are get that care from uh, the staff in CIS okay. office and they are so enjoy. When they are don't came to here, <laughs> They are make war in the home. Right. They are need to go to CIS mm -hmm. office, yeah. Oh. And my wife, she she learning now okay. English. Okay. She is the level one, mm -hmm. yeah. But she step by step, mm -hmm. day by day, she learn more English, yeah. Oh, nice. I'm yeah. really glad you you and your family have found their home here. Yeah, That's thank you. really good to know. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much for sharing with okay. us. You're welcome, thank yeah. you. Welcome ladies and gentlemen, it's a beautiful day. We are right here in Georgetown, in the heart of the Couch and Valley, where we are gonna witness something very exciting. Yes, we're so excited today and very proud and honored to be on the traditional land of the Couch and people, where generations and generations going so far back have been on this land carrying the traditions and heritage of their people. And today we're in for a special treat with the Couch and Sinqua dancers well-traveled, well-loved, and quite a show. And you're gonna witness the purest form of dance that has been preserved since time immemorial. So hang on, sit tight, relax, and watch this exciting show. Well, what an amazing performance that was. And now we're speaking with Lawrence Joe. He's one of the Cowichan tribe's elders and leaders of the Sinqua dancers. The dancing is uh, good for the boys to learn the songs and dances, the cultures, and uh, all the songs came from an all Indian opera. Um, it was done in back in 1945 and in the late 50s too also then we revived wow. it back in 1979 80 area so wow you've uh, been carrying that for this long the same the tradition of the the songs and dances yes i especially the boys how to dance and everything like we had a new one here today first time dancing so his first time today and he's on wow. tv <laughs> yeah wow, wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah. So, Elder, what, what message can you give to the, to the to 
all the people listening there why maybe it is important to dance or maybe why yourself you have kept dancing or you listen to your elders that you must dance and you did exactly that. Yes, that's true. The elders that we have, they were mostly all gone now. All, no, nobody's around now to teach, to give us the directions. And we have a, a few now that were in the, in the, the, the opera. I uh, have one or two left, one, two left now out of the group. Uh, they, like we saw the new boy dance today, so we uh, are going to have a talk with him, but I <laughs> end up doing this here. And, <laughs> <laughs> and that's the teaching, and that's the art of dance, is that you, you do it and it grows and it builds. Yeah. By the way, before we, 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 we go, maybe to know the meaning maybe of the, what the word kauchan, what it means, and also maybe the word sinkwa, what it means, maybe people might maybe get some education from that. The word of kauchan, it came from the back, warm back, the sun, that uh, there's a, a frog up at Mount Suhalem. His, his, his back's facing the mountain there. That's what they call it, Mount Suhalem, and that's where we get our, got our name from kauchan. And sinkwa is the meaning of the killer whale and a thunderbird. The, like the logo I got on the shirt, that's, the, that's, that's a dance group logo uh, okay. in the Couch and Tribes. Thank you, Lawrence, so much for sharing so much on the Couch and land and sharing about your people, the traditions, the arts and culture. Yes, Haishka. Haishka, to say thank you. To say thank you, Haishka. Yes, Haishka. Well, that's a wrap for this episode of Where You Live. We hope you enjoyed this Duncan edition and hope that you might find it online and share it all over social media for us. And if you have any ideas about future upcoming episodes, we always love hearing from the viewers, so don't be shy and send us an email. Otherwise, next episode, we're going to meet you somewhere very green. <laughs>